She's saying, please don't eat me. When I first became vegetarian, I just was really picky about eating, so I just didn't eat meat, and I didn't actually eat a lot of like fat and sugar and stuff. It wasn't a diet I was trying to achieve, it was just like this fear of getting sick from the food I was eating that I, I just wanted to eat healthier. Over time though, as I got older, it did become a lot more about the guilt that I felt eating meat. It really hit home when I started to transition into eating a vegan diet, which is no meat, no dairy, no eggs, nothing from an animal that it really made sense to me that I shouldn't be eating anything coming from a living creature. Hello! Oh. To me, there's no difference between the pet that I have at home, whether it's a cat or a dog, or you have a fish or a, a rabbit, and then the pig or the cow that's on the farm that people eat. I've never felt the need to tell somebody what's on their plate unless they ask, and I've never brought it up unless someone asks me. So if I'm eating with someone and they say, why don't you eat meat? or what's your reason for going vegan, they're opening the conversation. It's not so much me telling them what to eat ever, I'm just telling them what they're eating. But I think people can make their own choice for that and I would never expect or force on someone because you, you have to learn on your own and you have to come to these realizations on your own. I started feeling like I wasn't doing enough, that this sort of had to start going beyond me into animal activism, which was something that I've read about, I have friends who do it, and I kind of thought, why aren't I doing that stuff? Like, why aren't I spreading the word more? Why aren't I being more action-oriented with this whole vegan thing? Because it's not just a belief, I think there are actions that have to go along with that. So I went to an anti-fur rally, or an anti-fur demo, and these happen once a week every Friday. And it was a bunch of people that get together with signs, megaphones, and they march down Spadina protesting the fur industry. I am kind of nervous because I've never gone to a protest before and I feel like very intimidated. And I feel like because I'm not 100% ethical in all ways that I'm somehow going to be judged. So I'm, I'm kind of scared. It was crazy. Like it was pretty much exactly what I thought a protest is. It's a little in your face. Signs that say like, fur is murder, and exactly what people think vegans are like, that they walk around saying fur is murder. I think that's what people think vegans are. So it was exactly what I kind of expected, and I did feel pretty uncomfortable, just because of the, I guess the tone. Like it was just very loud, it was very in your face, and of course that's how you want to get a message out but I wasn't ready to jump in there and start like screaming at people and I think it's just for some people and it's not for some other people I can see how it would be intimidating for people to come across a bunch of kids just <laughs> yelling at them right like don't do this don't yeah. do that I think there's like the stigma around protesters like everyone thinks they're one way right yeah. but I guess how else are you supposed to get anyone's attention unless you kind of scream like yeah. no one's gonna pay attention unless you're loud yeah shame on this car make it worthy of the an obvious thing for me like I don't wear real fur this is faux fur but you know things like leather and wool and all these other animal products are something I still have in my closet you know you cannot think about it or you can think about it and I guess now I'm just starting to think about it more my overall impression of the fur rally was just strange it's it's not for me I don't see myself ever wanting to put a megaphone in my hand hold up a sign with a dead animal on it and like scream at people. I just don't want to do it that way. All right, everyone, it's about 7 a.m. and I am now headed to Pig Island here in Toronto. So after the fur rally, I decided to check out something called Toronto Pig Save. It's a group of people that are, I guess, silently protesting or bearing witness to animal slaughter. <laughs> I can't tell if people are honking because of the traffic or is it honking for us. <laughs> Everyone sees these big trucks full of pigs going to the slaughterhouse, you know, multiple times a day. But we don't really know what happens after that. We were kind of just standing on the street, trying to pass along some information about being vegan, letting people know that the slaughterhouse is literally just around the corner and, you know, not being pushy. 
Would you be interested in taking a vegan starter kit? It'll give you recipes and information about the meat industry and the dairy industry. I kind of like this one. I, I didn't really like the fur one. But, I don't know, I feel like we're being really nice and pleasant and like, we can actually talk to people, which I like. People are nice. What we were really hoping would happen is that these trucks full of the pigs going to the slaughterhouse would actually stop as well to turn onto the street and that we would actually get to see these pigs. Empty trucks were leaving and trucks were driving by and avoiding us at the corner. You should get a shot though. I really just wanted to see these pigs up close. I've never seen a pig in real life up close, alive. I've never really seen a pig up close. Here you can touch them. Uh, well, I, uh, yeah, I actually hope that I get to do that. Look at his eyes. They have uh, like a like, lot of different expressions. Yeah. They're very expressive, yeah. just like humans. Uh, they have even without doing anything, like he's so like has like a definitely like a f expression going on there. I just said to my camera guy, I was like, let's just go. It's it's over. We're not going to see one this time. I'll have to come back at another vigil. And of course. We were packing up and then we see a truck coming up and of course the timing worked out perfectly where the light was red. The truck had to pull over to make a left turn and stopped right there so we got to go right up to the truck. And there were pigs in this truck all smashed in there. You can see this guy's face right here. Shit. Look. I mean there was holes in the side of the truck where you could see directly in. You could see what they were experiencing and they were looking right at us. It was the weirdest experience. It was really emotional, and it was really strange to be that close to this pig that is a live animal that is meant to be living its life on a farm peacefully, and it's just being treated like nothing. It's being treated like food. It's being treated like it's not alive. You almost like expect them to say something. Yeah. And then it was like awful when the truck pulls away and you know it's going to die. I needed to see that and I needed to experience that to really get it. It's so weird. All this talking about activism with some people I did connect with, the idea of a farm sanctuary kept coming up and people connected me to a place called Wishing Well Sanctuary which was just about an hour outside the city and it's a place where rescued animals or rescued farm animals coming from slaughter get to live out their life peacefully the way they're supposed to on a farm. Do pigs bite? They can. Oh, okay. These guys don't. The animals have personalities and needs and wants and you know they need love and attention and shelter and f companionship as we all do. And I think when people see that, they will make different choices, they want better choices. What I took away from it too is Brenda had told me a story of a young boy that went there with his school and spent time with the pigs and made that decision and said right there and then he wasn't going to eat meat. And he was a young kid and I think that's where this change needs to come from and I think I think it's happening. It's it's happening slowly but people are becoming more aware. So these are the pigs, right, as they get older that people eat. Yes. Hi. Oh yeah, you are strong. Oh my god. Yeah, he's strong. <laughs> this wasn't a long journey, but it was enough and it was impactful enough for me to realize that if I'm going to do this for myself and I believe that it's the right thing that for all humans, then why shouldn't I just say that? and try and spread the word the way I feel most comfortable. It's like encouraging and it's exciting that maybe somebody will see this and then want to go to the farm sanctuary, want to come to the vigil, or even just want to ask me about it. I think that's enough as well. It doesn't have to be in your face and hey and screaming. It can be however, you know, it can be delivered however you, you want.